There's been a lot of impressive homebrew built for the Game Boy Advance over the years, including ports of 3D games like Quake and Tomb Raider. Pushing the GBA to its limits can teach you a lot about optimization, and by building 3D software rendering engines, you can learn a ton about computer graphics. But if you're new to the GBA, homebrew, or game development, then one of the best things to do is to start with something simple. Today we'll go over how to get started building a Pong clone for the GBA. You can get the full code in the description below. Building a game like Pong is one of the best ways to familiarize yourself with a gaming console. In my opinion, it makes an excellent first game to learn the fundamentals of new hardware and tool chains. Without much code, building Pong teaches you about user input, rendering graphics, collision detection, designing game logic, points and scoring, computer players, and managing game states. So let's get started. Now, the first thing you want to do is set up your dev environment for a GBA Homebrew. The best way to do this in 2023 is still with DevKit Pro, which is a provider of tool chains for homebrew development. One of their tool chains is for GBA development, which is what we'll be using. So you're just going to want to go to devkitpro.org slash wiki slash getting underscore started and follow the directions for your operating system. The GBA tools that come with DevKit Pro are fairly straightforward to set up, but if you need any help setting up an emulator or your dev environment on any of the major operating systems, you can check out my guides on zerodayarcade.com slash tutorials. All right, well, with our dev environment set up, we can now write some code. So the first thing I like to do is just create a simple hello world type of program to make sure everything's running. So I'm gonna create a new directory, Pong Homebrew GBA, and that will be this, this project's directory. And I'm gonna copy the contents of the template example that comes with DevKit Pro uh, and copy those contents into my project directory. Uh, this will just give me a working example to start with, um, and I can verify that my environment and everything is set up correctly. I've just done this with the command line, but you can also find this example folder on your computer and copy the contents into your project directory with a copy and paste. I'm also going to delete the programmer's notebook project file uh, because we don't need that. I'm just using VS Code. You can really use whatever editor you like. So I'm going to rename the main project, uh, main source file, main.c, and now I'm going to edit it in VS Code um, to make sure that the changes I make are actually reflected in the compiled GBA ROM. So I'm going to change the hello world that comes in the template project uh, file to Pong for GBA, uh, and now I'm going to compile the project running make, and as you can see, this created a GBA ROM, which I'm now going to run. And there we go. Now everything is working correctly and we can compile our project. Now, before I do anything, I'm just gonna delete some uh, libraries and comments that we don't need in the code and some lines of code that we won't need for this project, uh, just to clean things up a little bit and make it a little easier to see what's happening visually. We now want a way to be able to render graphics. So what we're gonna do is essentially write directly to the frame buffer with the video memory um, of the GBA so that we can uh, plot pixels and then plot rectangles and other graphics. To do this, we'll set the GBA to mode three, which is one of the bitmap modes of the GBA. This is one of the simplest modes to work with. Uh, it's not, the right mode for every project, but for our purposes, it will do just fine. Now I'm gonna create a draw pixel function, which is just going to write to the frame buffer. We're gonna use that M3 mem, uh, mode three video memory essentially. And we're gonna, and that just allows us to write individual pixel values. So to demonstrate this, we're going to draw the center line for our Pong game, and we can simply just loop through um, the pixels right in the center of the screen and call our draw pixel function, which is just updating the uh, frame buffer, the video memory, um, and we'll see what that looks like. 
So as you can see, we've successfully uh, drawn some graphics now, just a simple center line. Um, and that was all we we're doing is updating the vid video memory on the Game Boy Advance. It's super simple um, and, uh, and easy to work with in mode three, especially. Okay, I'm now gonna create a rect struct um, type of object. And basically this is going to allow us to draw the paddles and the ball for our pawn game. Um, so this is just filling out a rectangular region. Um, and again, we're not gonna do any crazy optimization, anything super clever. We're just going to do a for loop um, and use that to draw a rectangle, a rectangular region of pixels to a certain uh, color value. If you're paying attention closely, you'll notice that I'm gonna make a couple mistakes in this loop, uh, but I'll fix them in a minute, um, as you'll see. All right, now we're gonna call our draw, or we're gonna create a rect struct for the human player, the human paddle. Um, and then we are going to set its initial values, uh, its x, y location, and its size with and height. And then we are going to call our draw rect function, which should draw the human player paddle based on the attributes that we gave it. So here I'm uh, using a pointer to pass it into the function. And we can see there are some errors. So just fix that real quick. And we should be good to go. Let's see if our uh, paddle gets rendered for the left side of the screen, which is gonna be our human player. Okay, we built the GBA ROM, now let's test it. All right, looks good. So we're just gonna do the same thing now for the uh, computer player and the ball. These are just simple rectangles, nothing fancy at all. Um, and we are just going to render them. Now I've moved the render into the while loop, the, the main game loop, so that it will, every frame, render them again. And this will become important when we add movement. Excellent, okay, so now we have the both players, the computer player and the human player, and we have the ball. Now, as in pretty much any video game out there, you're going to have user input that controls the uh, main character or the player's character. Um, in this case, this is just our simple paddle uh, and we want it to go up or down based on if we press the up or down button on the GBA and then for it to move up and down uh, in response to that. So we're just going to look for key presses um, and if it's, if it's up, then we move up. If it's down, then we move down. It's fairly straightforward. And so these uh, functions, keys down, keys up, scan keys, these are from the GBA input library that comes with uh, DevKit Pro GBA tools. These are already fairly low down calls. Um, so it, you know if you don't want to, there's really no reason of, of writing your own. You can just use these ones. Um, and it also makes it relatively readable. So we're just gonna update the Y position of our human player uh, in response to an up press or a down press. So let's make it and see what we get. Okay, so we are getting some input, which is good, but there are a couple of problems. The first is that it's only moving uh, on the frame that we have pressed the button. Uh, so it's just small incremental movements, not continuous movement. So we'll create a velocity to fix that. 
And this will allow for, for continuous movement where we can just set the velocity and have it uh, move with its current value. The second problem that you probably noticed right off the bat was that we're not clearing out our previous render. So it's just drawing over uh, the previous one and this obviously is not what we want. We only want the paddle to show up in the spot currently is at and not in the spot it's at and every previous spot. So we're gonna create a clear previous function and this is just going to clear the previous value of the rectangle and so we'll add these uh, previous x and previous y values to our structs so that uh, we can just call that clear previous function to clear out the previous object uh, before we draw the new version of the rectangle. So we'll do this with each player and the ball. And we're also gonna need to make sure we set the previous X position and Y position at the end of the loop. So I'm writing it just uh, above our clearing function, but I'll move this down in a second. Okay, so after the final render, then we set the previous and this allows us to clear out the previous version. All right, now we're having continuous movement, but there's still a slight problem. It, we're, our paddle is not respecting the floor and the ceiling. Uh, and also it's switching direction when we press up or down, uh, which was what we want. But when we release up or down, it's not stopping. And we want it to stop if we're not pressing, to be stopped if we're not pressing any buttons. So uh, I'm gonna fix a couple of bugs and add a little bit more logic for that. And let's try it again. Okay, great, so now the paddle is respecting the floor and the ceiling, and if I stop pressing up or down, it stops moving. Okay, so what's next? Well, we've been able to program in rendering graphics, taking user input, and then moving in response to that input, but we still haven't programmed everything for our Pong game. We need to program the ball movement and wall bounces. We need a computer player strategy. We need collision detection between the paddle and the ball in response to that. And we need a way to score and win in the game. Optionally, we might also create some sort of a menu or a way to switch between game states. Now, in this video, I don't wanna go over the details of the coding of all of those. I think those are best left to you to use this as an exercise to build Pong for yourself. But if you do need help, um, or if you get stuck, or you just want to see how to complete a game of Pong, you can check out the full code and the full project on the GitHub repo, which I'll link to in the description below. This is on the Zero Day Arcade GitHub. Um, and the project is Pong Homebrew GBA dashes in between. So there you'll see implementations of collision detection and bouncing off the walls and scoring, winning, uh, a very simple menu system, uh, and really just a little bit more filled out uh, game rather than just a simple, you know, sort of movement demo. The final version ended up looking like this. Uh, you know, it's not going to win any awards. It's not meant to be a great game or anything. It's really just supposed to demonstrate the core concepts of game development and or GBA development for, uh, especially, especially if you're a beginner to the GBA. Now, one of the main reasons you're probably developing for the GBA is to be able to play your game or program on original hardware. And the way to do this uh, is basically you get a flash cartridge, you upload your ROM onto that flash cartridge, and then you just play it in your Game Boy Advance as you would any other game. Similarly, if you have one of the original Nintendo DS's, they have, you know, a GBA slot in slot two. So you can just use that same flash cartridge on a Nintendo DS in slot two. Now, a third option is to use a retro emulation handheld. I understand why some people don't like these. Um, I, I get wanting to use original hardware. Um, but at the same time, a lot of people have these these days. Almost all of them have Game Boy Advance emulators, and it can be another way to get people to be able to play your Game Boy Advance game on a handheld. So that's a good option for some people, especially if you have friends uh, who have uh, retro handhelds but might not have a flash cart to use. 
Um, and ultimately, flash cartridges that you buy new today, some of them can be more expensive than some of these retro handhelds. So for some people, that might be a good option. Now there are a lot of interesting ways to program and work with gaming consoles, uh, and that's even beyond standard sort of game development. If you're interested in learning how various gaming consoles work, how you can control them and build programs for them, uh, and also interested in topics related to cybersecurity, penetration testing, hacking, the homebrew scene, and other related topics, then you'll see a lot more content like that on this channel. We'll be exploring the capabilities of different gaming hardware and seeing if we can push them to do things that maybe they weren't designed for originally.